Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. You might have asked yourself, what in the world is a Nord Half Moon switch and why do I need one? So it is an accessory. It's something you can purchase. It's made by Nord. It's called the Nord Half Moon switch and it allows you to control the speed of the Leslie speaker emulation that happens on a lot of the Nord keyboards. Not all of them, but a lot of them. In particular, it's for the Nord organ family, it's for the Nord stage family, and it's for the Nord electro family. All of those instruments that I just mentioned all have an organ engine, and they all have Leslie speaker emulation where you might want to change the speed of that Leslie speaker using this half moon switch. Now, just because you have a stage three or an electro does not necessarily mean that this switch is going to be compatible from a mounting standpoint. In other words, this switch is purpose-built to mount directly on your keyboard, but it's only compatible with those keyboards that have physical drawbars versus the digital drawbars. Two different things there. Those with a digital keyboard, digital drawbar keyboard, there's no holes at the bottom of your keyboard to accept this particular device. Now, why they've chosen to do that, I'm not exactly sure why, but they probably had in mind that those that are going to invest in the physical drawbars would most likely be the same musician types that would want a Nord Half Moon switch. Because the switch here is really, it, the idea behind the switch is it emulates what you would see on a traditional B3 controlling and connected to a Leslie speaker. In order to adjust the speed of a Leslie speaker, if I'm playing a B3 organ, in a church setting or in a gospel setting or in any setting really, I can move this switch left and right. I have three options. I have slow, I have stopped, and I have fast. And I can toggle between those easily with my left hand. So if you've grown up in that world and that is the world you're coming from and you find yourself playing now a Nord Stage 3 or an Electro or any of the Nord organs, then you're going to want to have something that feels like home. And this switch is certainly uh, gets that job done. Now, if you didn't grow up in that environment, you don't necessarily need to purchase this because all of the control for your Leslie speaker emulation speed is on the panel itself. You can use the buttons that say slow, fast, or stop mode, and that will adjust the speaker speed. No problem. You don't need this accessory. So I think this accessory, like a lot of things in life, is done for particular audiences and for those who really grew up with a B3 or really have that notion of this is the best way to change the speed because this is how it's done on the real McCoy, then absolutely this, this particular item is for you. Now, besides the buttons on the panel and the half moon switch, you can also use a control pedal or a sustain pedal connected in certain ways on the keyboard to also change the speed of the rotary speaker. So you're not really reduced or limited to buttons or this switch. You can actually use pedals to do that as well. So I just want you to be aware of that. All right, so that's what it is and that's what it does. So first let's unbox this and then we'll mount it to the Electro 6. We'll look at how it looks underneath on the Nord Stage 3. Then we'll talk a little bit more about this switch and how it might work with a third party switch if you decided not to go the route of the Nord. It talks about where to mount it on the Nord C2D, the Nord combo organ. And it tells you that it needs to go into the rotary control. And it also says you need to go into the setting to put the half moon setting in the rotary control type option. Okay, and here it is. It's this simple. All right, made of metal, and it's very, uh, very good quality here. And the screws are in such a way that they don't change position. They're fixed here with this washer, this, this kind of a locking washer that keeps it there, and the screw holes are fixed to a certain dimension. So that's going to be important uh, for when we mount this. The cord is built in and it's using a TRS cable. So it's pretty slick. Uh, it's made of, it's almost like a powder coating metal where it's not going to scratch easily. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That's all that's in there. And uh, nothing fancy in the unbox. 
So mounting the half moon switch is fairly easy. Here I have my Electro 6. You just take the switch here. It's got the screws. Again, they're protruding out, and there's nothing you can do about that. They're fixed that way, and that actually works to your advantage here. So you just push this along the bottom, and as you move it, you'll actually feel where the screws want to go into the holes. I got, there we go. And then you just tighten it from underneath, just like this. And I would do the two of them together if you can. Seems to work a little smoother that way. It's going to take several revolutions here to get this on. Okay, then once it's mounted, you'll take the cable and you'll go underneath the keyboard and back up through and locate the rotor pedal, the back jack of your Nord Electro 6 or the Stage 3, and then you'll have mounted the half moon switch. It couldn't be easier. Here's the bottom of the half moon switch. You can see that this cutaway here allows the cable to mount flush to the bottom of the case where the footrest is going to be taller than the cable. So the cable will fit beautifully under the keyboard without any kind of uh, disruption. Then these are the screws here where you use to tighten and loosen uh, the foot switch. You have to make these fairly tight or it won't be, you know, you're gonna have to use some strength there to hand tighten that. It's still hand tightened. Obviously you don't wanna use a tool or something like that, but there is a little bit of a gap here between what you see here on the half moon switch. So it isn't exactly touching. Let me show you what I mean. If you look straight down on the switch, you can see a little bit of a gap here. Um, and that's just probably to give it some leeway. So it's, it's fairly sturdy. I mean, it's all metal and it's not going anywhere, but there is a little bit of a play to it. It's not exactly, you know, it doesn't feel like it's permanently affixed to the keyboard, but that's important to know. Now, the other thing that some people complain about on this switch is the fact that it makes noise when you switch it. So during those quiet, religious passages, the last thing you want to hear is that in the middle of a nice quiet passage. So the way I get around that, or the way I think one could get around that is just don't flip it like this. If you are finding yourself, just hold it and you reduce the sound by, you know, one third, maybe even more versus this. Okay, so now when the organ is playing, you'll note that I have settings here. This, if I push this, at any, no matter where the switch is, if I push one of these buttons here to go from slow to fast, this will override the switch. If I then switch this to fast or stop or slow, this will override. In other words, the last function, the last input that you have will be how the keyboard responds. So both the buttons and the switch act as a controller for the speed of the rotor speaker. And the whatever one you're using last is what the keyboard is going to latch onto. And I guess the same could be said if you were using a sustain pedal to adjust the rotor speed, or if you're using a control pedal to adjust the rotor speed, all of that plays into whatever I'm pushing last for my controller is how the keyboard is going to behave. But that's just a small subtlety there that I wanted to bring to your attention. All right, it's a pretty sharp addition to the keyboard. In stop mode. Slow. Fast. Stop.
So if you are interested in the Half Moon Switch, you can feel free to use the links below this video in the description and you can click on those links and they'll direct you to an Amazon page where you can purchase it. Incidentally, I was quite surprised. I bought this through Amazon and I'm a Prime member and it arrived the same day. Yes, the same day. And I was quite surprised that something so unique like a Nord Half Moon Switch would arrive the same day. But it does in selected locations. All right, so that's that. Now, could you use a different third-party Half Moon Switch for this? The answer is quite possibly yes, but where you are going to miss out is the fact that the mounting screws may not be in the correct position if you buy a third-party switch. So there's something to consider. They might be, they may not be. I've heard a lot of people that attempted to save quite a bit of money by purchasing a third-party switch, only to find out that it doesn't mount correctly. There are some people that are happy to use the Velcro option. Now, just a second ago, I mentioned the word Velcro or Velcro option. Let me explain what I meant by that. There's a company here called Organic Sound, which produces a generic and much lower cost half moon switch, if you want to consider that. They actually have compatibility with many of the Nord keyboards, including the Nord C1, C2, the Electro 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5D, 6, and 6D as well as the original Stage and Stage 2 EX. Now, it may in fact be compatible with the Nord Stage 3 as well. It's not listed here, but perhaps it is compatible. Also note there are exceptions to this. You'll see asterisks here, which explains that these instruments can either not support the stop position, where it supports fast and slow positions properly, or this other exception here, which is notable on the original Stage, that these instruments cannot support stop position, need to set the start position in a certain way. In any case, it is potentially an option, and when I look at the Electro 5, 5D, 6, and 6D, this is like a modern day keyboard here, the 6 and 6D, that would be, looks like to be fully compatible. So if you have a Nord Electro and you're looking to save quite a bit of money for something that essentially does the same thing, this is a strong consideration. And now here's the Velcro option that I talked about. This gets around that issue of mountability. You can mount this anywhere you want on the keyboard because it's using Velcro. Again, you're saving quite a bit if you buy a third-party switch, but you don't get the full experience. It's not purpose-built. It's much like a lot of the things that Nord sells. Like if you get the Nord Music Stand, you're going to be paying top dollar, but the stand is purpose-built. It fits correctly. It's meant. It looks the same as the keyboard itself. It fits the whole picture. So I think you're paying a little extra for that purpose-built aspect of things. So hopefully this video gave you some insight as to what the Half Moon Switch is, how to mount it, what it's used for, how it works, whether you need one or not, and what happens if you don't buy this one and go with a third party. If you have more questions or want to provide feedback, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer that or react to that. Feel free to like the video and if you own a Nord keyboard, now is the best time to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you're alerted whenever I release something new. It's now 2022 and we'll be doing a lot more videos coming up soon. Thanks for joining me on this one. As always, thanks for the support and we'll catch you on the next one.